Linda Fox. I'm a senior reporter with Focus Fire, and I'm in the studio at the World Aviation Festival. I am with um, Rodrigo Sellers, Senior Vice President of Product Management for Sabre. Um, and I should also just mention that we are in partnership with Pros for the studio. So thanks for coming along, Rodrigo. Thanks, Linda. Um, so I was looking through sort of notes on kind of current trends and sort of buzzwords going around. One of them is tech-driven hyper-customization. <laughs> <laughs> Break it down for us. Tech-driven hyper-customization. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, the way I think about it and, you know, when we talk to our airline partners, you know, a lot has to do not so much with customization, but I think it's more around them taking more control and actually their ecosystem becoming a lot larger, you know. Mm -hmm. Many years ago, you know, maybe airlines thought or maybe even us on the technology side that only few parts of the component were the entire airline ecosystem. And what we've seen more and more is that, you know, airlines want to really break apart their ecosystem and have the flexibility and the openness in platforms that they can in easily integrate and have the set of APIs that can actually enable their business goals, you know, by enabling that, you know, integration. So not so much about hyper customization, but I think yeah. hyper flexibility and hyper openness in terms of the platforms that they want to integrate. One of the things that we believe, you know, are very important as part of our own, you know, strategy at Sabre, we think about retailing, distribution and fulfillment and offer, it's all about retailing, it's all about the offer creation and the science around it and being able to take multiple data points in order to create the most compelling offer based on the type of customer, the type of channel that you want to distribute and give that intelligence in terms of that offer creation back to the airline. This idea of one-to-one -one marketing, I don't feel like that's possible with an airline. You don't fly off in and up unless you're doing you know, three times a week back and forth to a city. So is that is it possible in an airline or do, do we get close to it or do we do segments? What do we do? Yeah, you know, I think it depends also on the market, the type of airline and the business model right. that they have. You know, I think it's not one-to-one -one for every airline and you know, across the industry. But I do believe that there's a lot of segmentation that needs to happen. And one of the things that people talk about is, you know, just, you know, customer centricity and, you know, matching to customer needs. And what we see is twofold. One is implicit and then explicit, right? So implicit may be based on certain attributes and how you're searching, really tailor the offer towards you and more trying to segment based on that persona, based on the type of travel that you're doing. And then really if the airline knows more about that traveler, really personalizing the offer based on historical patterns or type of products that you maybe you purchased in the past. So I think it's a combination, but I don't think it's, you know, the answer is one-to-one -one for everybody and every customer. Okay. Now, we have to touch on Fairlogics because it would be <laughs> obvious if we didn't. Yes. Is the company still confident that that deal will go through? You know, I can't really comment much on it other than what we've actually, you know, uh, sure. said publicly and, you know, we're going through the process and want to be respectful uh, to that. So. Sure. Honestly, I can't comment no, much on that. Is there a scenario where that deal doesn't happen, so forget about that logics, do you then look to buy someone else or do you look to build in-house? I think, again, you know, part of what we're talking about is accelerating and, you know, really, you know, that's part of our strategy and focusing on that. So, you know, again, can't really comment on, buy, on buying anybody, etc. It's It's really, you know, we're focused on our strategy and executing and really building this, you know, across the industry. And for us, it's a really important component of our retailing distribution and fulfillment strategy and we are committed to the industry and to our partners on that. Sure. Okay, fair enough. Um, let's take a talk about airline competitiveness, competitivity. Um, if everybody has the same technology or it ends up with AI, um, you know, biometrics kick in, uh, personalization, orders, offers, NDC, whatever, you know, whatever, all of those things come to the mix, then do we not just get down to the lowest common denominator? Yeah, you know, that's an interesting point. And I think, you know, uh, we've invested quite a bit, for example, in our dynamic pricing solutions in terms of, you know, how do we um, optimize using a lot of intelligence in our solutions, fares, inventory and availability distribution, etc. And, you know, the typical answer or the, or the thought process would be it's a race to the bottom, yeah. right? If everybody's actually lowering prices, you're actually going to. And what we've seen actually is data tells us that and actually specific points in the market that we've tested also with, with some of our partners is that it doesn't, right? I think it actually, you know, will actually improve the market, you know, penetration, will improve the price points, will improve the optimization of the offers and the products. So I think at least the data, what it's telling us is not really raised to the bottom, but it's really going to bring up the entire industry. Okay, but surely if everybody's equipped with 
the data and the industry is de siloed and everybody is, is, is making these you know, step changes, then you get to a point where great for the industry and, and great for, for customers, but actually there still isn't any differentiation. I think that's where you know technology can help airlines differentiate in you know and then also their brand image. There are other pieces of the airline, you know, where they want to have specific maybe business models that they want to follow and they actually want to chase and customers types that they actually want to focus on. But it's it's one component, right? So for us, you know, again back when we think about the ecosystem, we play a big component from a technology perspective, but there are other aspects of the airline, right? Think of joint ventures that they want to get into, uh, new business segments that they want to fly to, redoing their networks, expanding their networks. And I think there's a lot of opportunity to not, not just, you know, everybody to be the same, but actually create that differentiation, not just using technology, but also how they're positioned, their brand, how they approach their consumers, and how they actually distribute their products across different channels. Okay. There's been a lot of talk about digital transformation, <clears throat> excuse me, in airlines. And there is a view that some airlines are just, you know, using it as an excuse to revamp their website or perhaps their mobile app or whatever it happens to be. And that perhaps the money would be better spent doing smaller things which would make a bigger difference in the background. Do you agree with that? No, I think it's not just about the website. And when we, you know, when we talk about digital transformation, I don't think it's just the mobile app or the website, but it's a complete change in terms of mindset. In I terms mean, of the, be, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about processes. It's about you know, how you actually, you know, recruit people, how you structure the airline, right? I mean, let me give you an example. You know, many airlines now, you know, think of revenue management and offer management being one team, right? So, and how that influences digital and how you actually push the offer. So, you know, when we talk to airlines and when we partner with them in terms of digital transformation projects, it's top to bottom. It's, you know, how do we help from an organizational perspective? How do they rethink, you know, their revenue teams and how that influences not just digital, but also all channels of distribution. That's one of the big themes also for us in terms of helping airlines with an omni-channel distribution. And omni-channel is not just mobile, desktop, and you know, and, and your mobile app, but it's you know every channel that the airline wants to sell and distribute their products. Now we touched on data. Would you say that airline maturity in terms of uh, understanding the need to use their data, getting to that data, being to, able to use it in a, in a meaningful way. Would you say that, where's, where on the scale would you say the industry is in general? You know, I think we've made a lot of progress. Uh, we're not there 100%, I would say, and some are actually, you know, more ahead than others, I think, in general. But I think now the concept of data and the importance of data, I think it's, it's you know, a key pillar of every airline strategy. I think more and more they're understanding that the more insights they can get from the data, they can produce better products. They can create a better customer experience. You know, they can actually have a better sense in terms of their distribution strategy. So I think just in general, there's an appreciation for data, but there's more to do there. Okay. And just this idea of a digital airline um, and, and customers wanting this digital experience, I sometimes think, well, actually, we just want to go and buy a seat in a really easy way. I don't necessarily think it's a digital experience. So, you know, this idea of a digital airline is that is is that really something? Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's absolutely something that you know. The more you think about how consumers interact with airlines today, there's a lot of touchless interaction, or what I call, I think about it as you know, your your invisible customer, right? Mm -hmm. So where many customers just interact with the airline through digital touch points. Sure. So I think. The more that we can advance providing, you know, seamless integration, seamless customer experience, and really making it easy for consumers. Right, so they not, don't feel that there's all this funky Exactly, and not just that, but also I think, you know, to me, like the initial buying transaction or the interaction is always going to be probably the smoothest, right? But what happens when something goes wrong? When an airline goes through a disruption, right? With a flight cancellation, when there's a massive snowstorm somewhere and you need to reaccommodate passengers. To me, that's also very important when we think about the fulfillment side of our strategy on how do we enable that so that airlines and consumers can actually, you know, really have the right tools and technology at that time when something goes wrong as well to be able, be able to recover and be able to continue with their journey. Rodrigo, it's been great talking to you. Thank you so Thank much you, for Linda. your time. Thanks so much.